new entrant into the program is Mr. Kabiru Adamu. He's a security consultant. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kabiru. He joins us from Abuja Studio. Thank you uh, also as well. We have uh, stayed with us, Mr. Nick Dazang. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, apologies for keeping you longer than necessary, but uh, <laughs> we, uh, some of this information needs to, to go out. Uh, of course, uh, Mr. Basi Basi is still with us. Thank you so much. Uh, let me allow Mr. Adamu to come in. Uh, let, let's uh, pierce and break down the issue of security further. Uh, from what you, you observe and what you saw today and what you have heard, uh, what are your initial thoughts on the deployment, 31,000 for the police, that's uh, aside other security agencies? Um, so far, how far has it been? Um, on the on a general note, I would general. I would say it's commendable. Um, if you compare it to previous elections, state elections, especially off cycle elections, uh, the kind of incidences we saw, especially if we use Kogi as the benchmark, uh, I think we've not witnessed any major incidences. As far as the numbers are All concerned. Right. Um, that, that is also a commendable effort. Uh, almost all the security agencies I know have deployed. The two that we've had their figures are the police with about 31,000 and then the civil defense with, if I'm right, about 13,000. 13, um, so that, that's quite commendable. Um, the gray area, especially going by previous uh, meetings by the Interagency Consultative Committee on Electoral Security, has been in the area of the harmonization of operations of these um, security agencies. Now, with spe specific regard to the elections today, uh, we saw an attempt to, for, of coordination between the various security agencies. Um, so to that extent, I think lessons have been learned from previous elections, and um, INEC has put in place measures to improve on some of the challenges that were witnessed in previous elections. So I would say, on a general note, a pass mark for the security agencies. I raised an issue earlier, since we have uh, the ACG of NSCDC here. I said, is it a good time to have relaxed the curfew uh, at 6 p.m. today? Knowing full well that uh, it's not all over, considering it, what a lot of politicians know at the critical moment, which is now, is dark, and these re results are now at stake. What do you think? Um, the, the provision of security is usually done strategically. Um, what, what are the likely risks that would arise this night? Where is the center of activity at the moment? I would say collation, collation um, centers. Uh, so do, do we have enough, do the security agencies, the public security agencies have enough resources to ensure security at the collation centers and at INEC offices. Of course, that's another critical area. I would say yes, um, given the numbers that we, we've spoken, I, they, they do have. But then if you compare the earlier, uh, during the election stage, the fact that there are several polling units, and then you have this number of security agencies, then um, putting in place a curfew to reduce the areas where they need, they need to look out for, it's a good move. But given that the elections are over, now we're in the collation stage, then I would say that it, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's okay to, to handle that. The gray area, and I un unfortunately I've already received a report in that regard, is the possibility of um, some of the security agencies attempting to implement functions that are not their designated functions within the I I um, ISIS regulation. As an example, the protection of collision centers, which of the agencies has that function? If the military, as an example, attempts to take up that function, why should it attempt to do that? Is that what is contained in the ISS? So I think those are gray areas that um, I'm hoping will not repeat itself. We saw it during the general elections in 2019, where one of the agencies attempted to do that, if I remember well, in River State, and it, um, the police resisted that attempt, and there was a lockdown between the two agencies. Um, I'm already hearing a particular report of, of something like that. So I hope it does not escalate. And um, all, everybody comes to or sticks to his major responsibilities as far as uh, um, the ISS guidelines and regulations um, provide. Let, let's ask Mr. Bassi. Uh, you are part of the inter uh, 
uh, yes. Agency Security uh, um, yes. uh, Consultative Forum yes. for, this, uh, for this election. Yes. Who is in charge? Which agency is in charge of uh, safeguarding or protecting uh, uh, the process of collation of results? The, po the police are the lead agency when election Even starts. at the collation now? Yes. But the police cannot do it alone. The civil defense are there. Other agencies, uh, security agencies are there. But is the military allowed no, in the, that process? The military are kept off. It is when there is this, a dire situation where they could, could not contain, they made the, the military are calling. But in every place you go now, to all the, in all the polling units, uh, collection centers, it is the police and civil defense. Other uh, security agencies like the prisons, the correctional service, and the immigration are all part of it. So because I asked this, uh, this same question to Mr. Omar, and I uh, put that same question to Mr. Kabura Adamu, that if you uh, put a coffee, I mean, the baby is not yet birth uh, at this moment. I think it is not yet Uhuru. The process is not yet over. Uh, is it right to have uh, stopped the curfew at 6 p.m.? Yeah, yes. Knowing how critical things are. No, you know, so there will be movement in and out of the state, isn't it? Yeah, but you know that the area of coverage now has been reduced. Before now, we are looking at all the pooling units. But now it's only the collation centers. And most of them, the world, have, the world collation centers have been done now. At the local government. So only 18... Points. Points. No, it's the issue of when you are transporting. When we are tra so, so when you, I mean, so this is the scenario yeah, that I'm painting yeah, in my head. Yeah. So you stopped vehicular movement. Yeah. You stopped people moving in and out of the state. You yeah. stopped people moving around the state. Yes. But you have these 18 points. But people will want to transport to Benin City yes. from Ego, yes. from uh, Orion, from every part of the state, yes. uh, Edo, and wherever they may be. The, the, the issue on, the, on my mind at the moment is that during the transportation, there are enough men. Could, there okay. are enough men to safeguard all those materials. So nobody should be afraid. Nobody should be afraid. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me go back to Mr. Dazang. Uh, one of the candidates uh, raised an issue of a uh, slow smart card reader performance. What can you tell us? You you told us earlier that. Uh, the smart card reader has a lifespan. Is it that the smart card reader is approaching the end of uh, its, uh, its time and that's why it slowed down today? Or what could have caused it? Well, um, so in the areas where the smart card reader functions, there are, uh, there are pockets uh, of malfunction. But we anticipated this to happen. And that is why we have um, uh, we have technical staff uh, embedded in the wards, you know, uh, in you all know, the 192 wards, so that any time you have so uh, such a challenge, have, uh, such uh, a uh, these technical officers are summoned on phone, and there's there's a vehicle attached to them. They come in and troubleshoot, and and if the troubleshooting does not solve the problem then that particular smart card reader is replaced completely. And, um, of course, when you have that, it will delay the conduct of the election. So um, we anticipated that. And I told you earlier on that uh, it is in anticipation of that that we, we also introduced the z -part to complement the uh, smart card reader. Uh, uh, but as it is, we did not deploy the z -part in the conduct of the Edo governorship election, because like I said earlier on, we had not perfected uh, the use of the z -part. But subsequently, uh, what we do, we'll deploy it in subsequent elections and to uh, see how it can aid and supplement the smart card reader. Uh, so uh, the malfunctioning was anticipated, and I think that the scale at which we saw this malfunctioning uh, was manageable and uh, it did not affect the conduct of the election in any way. Uh, so, um, I I'll come back to you in a moment, Mr. Dezang. Let me go to Mr. Kaburu Adamu. Uh, from what we saw today, uh, what do you think should have been done differently uh, from your earlier analysis about 
the, the deployment of security uh, in the numbers, in the, uh, in the performance, in the delivery of their roles, what could have been done differently so that uh, the security agencies perhaps will have uh, come out in a finer form today? Uh, there are three major areas uh, of improvement. Um, one of them is training before the elections. The other one is deployment during the elections. And then the big elephant in the room is coordination of, of functions. Like we say in physical sciences, the sum of the parts is greater than the whole. Um, if you have all of them working together towards a common goal, then the output would be, would be better. And perhaps we wouldn't even need this, this number. Um, on, a, on a lighter note, who can actually raise his hand and say 31,000 police officers were actually deployed? Frankly, nobody. That's just a number that has been put out there. And on the, again, on a lighter note, there could be, you know, the, the big uh, elephant in Nigeria's room, the corruption tied to that, that number. So monitoring and evaluation can be improved. When we say we're deploying 31,000, which of the agencies would actually certify that 31,000 are being deployed? And then more importantly, uh, when it comes to the deployment, are we doing it strategically? We, have, we identified eight local governments that could be hotspots. Now, did INEC or anyone within the system um, ensure that a larger number went to that, those hotspots? Or where, was there a standby repeat response force that was adequately mobilized with communication and transportation to deploy to trouble hotspots if they do happen? Um, I mean, I, I would look back to Kogi. Some of the incidences that happened could have been stopped if we had repeat response capabilities within, the, uh, within ISIS. So um, then the last one is the harmonization of the operations of all of these organizations. If we had better monitoring and evaluation functions within, the, uh, within ISIS, the electoral security management, perhaps we would have seen an improvement and we wouldn't need this large number of um, you know, security officers that are being deployed because at the end of the day, that is another tool on our very lean resources. So to, for me, introduce monitoring and evaluation within electoral security management, it would greatly reduce the kind of resources that we deploy for election security. All right, let's take uh, another break. Don't forget that uh, there is another governorship election next month, and that is going to be in Ondo State. Uh, the second governorship election INEC will be conducting in uh, the COVID-19 period. How far has INEC performed and the security agencies in this election? What are the lessons for UNDO? And especially, we keep our tabs on the election collation and uh, the, res uh, the result collation for today's exercise. How far have they come? We'll get some word and some information for you after this break. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. Perhaps uh, I should quickly get back to Mr. Zhang. Um, uh, there were over 2 million registered voters. Only 1.7 million PVCs were collected. About 483,000 uh, uh, PVCs are uncollected. Uh, does this give INEC some worries uh, about the number of uh, uh, permanent v uh, uh, voters' cards that are not yet collected? Because I know you spend a lot of money in producing them. Yes, it does. Uh, thank you for appreciating that we spend, we invest a lot of money on that. But um, it's also not possible for all uh, voters, to registered voters, to collect their uh, PVCs because some of them would have died before now. But certainly, the number, the 483,000 is a substantial number. When you consider that um, in our own system, we, we run the first-past-the-post system, uh, which is the majoritarian system in which uh, for anyone to emerge as winner of um, a governorship election or a presidential election, first of all, he has to secure the majority votes cast in that election. So if, if uh, and then he has also to meet the requirements of 25% of the votes in at least two-thirds of the local governments in Edo State. 
And then in the instance of a presidential election, you have to score 25% in at least two-thirds of the states of the Federation and the FCT. So um, one vote can make the difference, you know, between uh, one candidate or the other. Uh, it can determine the, the winner. If two candidates uh, meet the requirement of spread and then the other one has just one vote, you know, ahead of the other candidate, then he takes the day. So uh, any vote is, uh, is crucial uh, in the conduct of our elections uh, because the, we, we defer to uh, what I said earlier on the, the first-past-the-post system in which the majority of votes cast is crucial uh, for a candidate to emerge victorious uh, in the contest. So it worries us. And we, 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 we put in a lot of uh, time, energy, resources, and money belonging to the taxpayers, you know, in doing continuous voter registration exercise, buying uh, direct data capture machines, which are basically laptops with accessories, uh, uh, employing staff to conduct the exercise, and then um, uh, removing uh, the, the multiple uh, uh, registrations, uh, you know, and then uh, leading up to the production of the permanent voter card. So when you look at it, a lot of resources are expended, and we regret that uh, after expending these resources, not all the cards are at the end of the day collected. All right, um, let's get uh, uh, to wrap up now. And let me get, uh, you practically participated in this exercise. And is it, uh, it's unfortunate that the issue of vote buying again is reoccurring. Uh, pockets of electoral violence also happened today. And uh, uh, going into Ondo, for example, some of your colleagues that will be there, what lesson do you think should be taken from this exercise tonight? Uh, uh, the lessons we have to take in tonight is there should be greater synergy than what we have between all the security agencies than what we have in, in the Edo here. So I think when all the security agencies work in harmony and in tandem, uh, we need, as is here in, in Edo, we didn't, we didn't witness so much violence, even though the, the narrative was that Violence would erupt in Edo. But because of the tight security situation in Edo State, the hoodlums would not have their way. So I think if we carry it forward to, to Ondo and give uh, the most energy and greater deployment of uh, all uh, the security agencies of the state, then I think we'll have a free uh, uh, all the electors will have the confidence to come out and vote, as we have today. There were so many, the, 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 the turnout that I saw in Benin here was so impressive because of the confidence that people have that they are safe to go and vote. Let me get uh, Mr. Kabir Adamu's uh, uh, final thoughts on the program. Uh, it's not over. Uh, the coalition will resume at some point in the night. It's going to be a moment to keep a vigil, but what are the fundamental lessons to be taking away from this exercise of today? Um, th thank you, Sheun. The For me, one major area to look out for, and my expertise is risk management. Um, there was a lot of negative mobilization by the politicians ahead of the elections. So that makes me a bit worried. Neg negative mobilization means if I'm a supporter, I, I think my candidate would, mean, would win because that's what my candidate has told me. He has told me at all costs I must, I, he would win. So if I'm a supporter and God forbid my candidate loses after negative mobilization, the likelihood is that I will react. So that, that is what, the, what I would point the security agencies to. Um, it's not yet Uhuru. Um, uh, before the elections, they managed the risks. During elections, they, we've, all, we've commended them. They're still post-election. And I would urge them to maintain that vigilance post-election. All the stakeholders that play the role, 
and you know, we, the CSO, civil society organizations, media, um, everyone, which is not yet Uhuru. Let's look out. And earlier on, I talked about monitoring and evaluation. I'm very happy with the passage of the Police Act 2020. Um, as far as the police is concerned, the Police Service Commission has been asked to play that role, to look out for the conduct of their officers during election. So that's a good step. Now, for the other organizations, the chairpersons of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Electoral Security are the INEC chair, uh, the National Security Advisor, and then I debatably the Inspector General of Police. So they, those, that, those three bodies have a responsibility to introduce monitoring and evaluation mechanisms within the ISIS going into the undue elections so that we utilize the little resources we have. And more importantly, if there is an erring security officer within the system, then he would be corrected by the monitoring and evaluation mechanism. That is something that has never happened, unfortunately, in previous elections. So I'm hoping that going into Edo, Undo, sorry, this uh, major areas will be looked at. And to avoid um, this, the lack of harmony that we saw in um, the Edo elections, uh, training is absolutely important. There is an SOP standard operating procedure that has been developed by INEC. All the security agencies need to operationalize it so that their officers, men and women, understand that standard operating procedure and not only understand it, they, they, they work with it um, you know, if, um, fully, 100%. Thank you so much, Mr. Kabira Adamu. And uh, let me get a uh, 30 seconds final thought on, uh, from uh, Mr. Nick Dazang of INEC. Uh, your closing thoughts, Mr. Dazang. Well, um, we, on, on, on the part of INEC, we will study what happened today. Uh, we'll learn lessons from the conduct of today's election. Uh, and then we'll factor these lessons uh, working with stakeholders in the conduct of subsequent elections. Um, the, 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 the commission, let, let me say one or two things. Uh, the commission also deploys its own uh, election violence mitigation tools. And it uses these tools to, you know, identify likely flashpoints uh, during the conduct of elections. And in addition to that, it shares the intelligence it gathers, you know, when it deploys these tools with members of the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security. Uh, secondly, also the Commission, uh, apart from doing a post-mortem and debriefing after the conduct of each election, uh, it has a vibrant um, uh, monitoring and evaluation department, which is involved uh, right from pre-election to the conduct of the election and to the post-election. Uh, it also evaluates all the activities we have done and uh, it, it, it guides uh, the, 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 there's a committee headed by a national commissioner, and there are other national commissioners on this committee, and this uh, committee advises the commission and, I, and uh, access. So I, I just thought my friend uh, Kabiru should know this, uh, uh, since that's his area, and that will also provide uh, context or material for him um in 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 his discourses thank you very much all right mr nick dazang director of voter education and publicity at INEC, mr kaburu adamu security consultant and mr basi basi scg of uh, uh nscdc here in edo state thank you gentlemen for your time tonight on the program